Well, the framers of the Constitution gave us recourse. It resides in Article 5 of the United States Constitution, a convention of the states to amend the founding document, essentially allowing us to bypass Congress. Joining me now from Lowry City, Missouri, State Director for an Article 5 Convention of the States, Keith Carmichael. Uh, Keith, I want to get to your situation there in the Show Me State, but first you have some Convention of the States breaking news. It involves former Senator Jim DeMint, who recently left the Heritage Foundation. He's joining your team, joining your squad. What does he bring to the table? Uh, what do you hope to get with him on the team? You know, as a senior advisor, great to be with you, by the way, uh, Graham. Graham, it's just a matter of... Um Having someone with, with the experience in Washington to know that the solutions are not going to come from Washington. I, we, we have folks who, who say, you know, that's not the only solution, but today that was his words as he came on board, um, as he views his history and, in the Beltway, uh, the Heritage Foundation in the Senate. This is the only solution as big as the problem. Do you envision him actually going to the remaining states who potentially could sign on to a convention of the states and doing some lobbying? Absolutely. You know, uh, he'll join Senator Colburn, who has been a stalwart in this effort already, and both, I think, will be a great team. They'll be going to states. They'll be visiting with legislators, a number of events right there in, the, in capitals as well across the country, uh, sharing their experience of, of, of solutions that can come from Washington, which is obviously nil, and so going to the state legislators and let them know that they have an opportunity and, yes, an obligation to act under the U.S. Constitution as states. All right, Missouri uh, did it without the help of Jim DeMint uh, in May last month, becoming the 12th state to sign on to a convention of the states. Um, of course, the United States Constitution prescribes 34 states to actually convene a convention. Do you think that that is attainable, for example, before uh, Election Day 2018? Well, you've just put a deadline there that maybe I wouldn't. I'm, I'm not about deadlines. You know, that's coming up pretty fast. Yeah. We're learning that it really, we're not going to stop elect, trying to elect the right people, but this is an avenue. If, if it was easy, it would have obviously been done already. We think that it is attainable. Uh, to put a deadline on there would probably be irresponsible. It's not as easy as, as you might hope it would be. But on the other hand, it is attainable because a uh, legislator, uh, by legislator, legislature, at each at a time, we're going to move this forward, and we have a tremendous team, and and of course it's uh, larger and much more uh, success is evident, I think, will be because of Jim DeMint's going to be on board. There seems to be some momentum, and that's the reason why I'm not really setting a deadline. I'm just trying to get some light at the end of the tunnel here, because when we first started talking about on this program, the Convention of the States. I believe there are only four states on board. Uh, now there are 12, and a lot of that momentum has kicked into gear since, yeah, essentially February 2016. So it was smack dab in the middle of an election year. So there seems to be a little bit of momentum. Is, is that what helped get Missouri over the top, or was it the fact that, uh, for example, Republicans have control of both bodies of the legislature in Missouri? Certainly that doesn't hurt anything. For predominantly, we, we go forward saying this is a nonpartisan issue, but it turns out to be a partisan issue in many instances because uh, there are those that at least say they'd like to restrain the power and jurisdiction of Washington. It turns out there's not many of those, near as many of those folks as we'd like there to be. Uh, what happened in Missouri is we worked hard for three years. The first year we passed it in one body uh, overwhelmingly. The next year we kind of concentrated in the other, thinking we were in good shape. Turns out we've ran out of time a couple of different, uh, different times, but in this year, 2017, we did it because of the team effort and the grassroots, because of leaders like, um, you know, Representative uh, Keith Frederick in, in Missouri House and, and the Speaker of the House, Todd Richardson, mm -hmm. and also in the Senate, you know, Keith, uh, and Mike, uh, we just really have uh, a lot of leadership there and, and Mike Kehoe, and they kept at it. It was one of these things, the first time it didn't happen, they didn't, they didn't set this aside. They kept on point because they believe it's the constitutional uh, remedy. And, they, and you talk to these individual legislators in Missouri, uh, several of them will tell you that this is the most important vote that they've taken in their career. Donald Trump, president, uh, has called for term limits. That is one of the items being bantied about as far as a convention of the states, if it happens, if uh, 
we achieve critical mass of 34 states, and then if 38 states can agree to uh, congressional term right. limits, I would throw in there uh, judicial term limits uh, as well. Um, Donald Trump has come out in favor of that. He's also finding out very quickly what four or five months uh, into his term, uh, the political headwinds he's facing in Washington, D.C. And so this is a way around it. Is, is that among uh, one of the favorites when you have been proffering this in Missouri? That is term limits, uh, possibly a balanced budget amendment, uh, repealing the 16th Amendment. What, what are some of the big ones that people are talking about in Missouri? You know, I would say in, in Missouri, we said that term limits have, we've had a mixed bag in, in the state capital. I would argue that on the national level, it's much different. There's a larger pool to draw from, and term limits is certainly something that, in terms of the terms we have today, are something that the founders would never have agreed on. But we find a lot of uh, traction on other issues. For example, when some, when folks come to me and say, well, what really can you do? What can you accomplish? What can really be ratified is the question. Mm -hmm. And my, my statement on that is really there's a handful of things that we should be doing already, Graham. For example, most Americans find it very discouraging that, that Washington doesn't have to use the same accounting principles than individual Americans can. If you and I use the same principles they use in Washington, we'd be in jail. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, General accepted accounting principles is something I think not only could we could agree on, but I think it could be ratified in a very short time. Now, I personally am not a term limits person as much as I'm a term rotation. I think there's some kind of uh, wisdom in having a rotation and not taking folks' liberty completely away to send someone that's proved to them that they, you know, that's someone they want to send. But yeah. but the jurisdictional matters I think are going to be the big issues that really resonate with Americans. We just do too much. We do far more we, than we can afford. I think most folks, as they look at this, would like to have a government for their children and grandchildren that they can actually afford. Well, when we look at Donald Trump trying to balance uh, his budget, uh, uh, possibly an amendment to the Constitution could force these people in Washington, D.C. to do what the president is trying to do. Keith, thanks. Sign the petition at cosaction.com and get as many of your friends and family to do the same. With your full address, your state legislators will know that you really are their constituents in their district. Our success depends on you, so we're inviting you to be part of history. Let's invoke the constitutional solution that's as big as the problem.